Hey, Brian here. Good news. Bert is back. And uh, you got to send him some like encouraging messages on social media to keep him rolling. In this video, Bert talks about a really important issue, which is finding reasons for intermittent breaker tripping. But I want to clarify something before we get into it. When you find a point of high temperature within an electrical circuit, that point is a point of resistance. So I'll talk a little bit at the end to kind of wrap up. But Check it out, Bert finds a real life problem with a circuit breaker. Okay guys, we got a breaker tripping periodically for our condenser. And uh, the first thing that I think about uh, when a breaker is tripping is that we have a poor connection point when it's tripping periodically. We probably have a poor connection point somewhere. And that could be like a loose wire going into anywhere on the high voltage circuit, loose wire going in, or a corrosion issue where a connection point is broken down and now um, that's starting to arc. One of the telltale signs is your breaker picks up heat as it starts running. Um, you're pulling normal amp draws from your system, but your wires are getting hot um, and your breaker is picking up heat. That's one of the first things I look for. We pulled off the breaker, checked the bus bar connection points in the back of the panel, um, and then noticed right away the discoloration on the one side. We don't have you know, a clean uh, metal on our terminal block like we do on the other side and it had been getting hot because of the loose connection point and uh, also looking inside you can actually see that the whole bottom I don't know if you guys can pick up that kind of detail but the whole bottom in here has been pitted so it's been arcing in here and that loose connection will cause overheating in your breaker the breaker will periodically trip uh, your wild wires will get warm um, so there's your uh, periodic breaker tripping tip of the day. Also, I might add, if you can, I don't, I don't even want to tell you what that breaker smells like. It is, it's bad. So you always use your nose. All right, so just to wrap it up here, a lot of times people will get confused because they'll think that an area of higher resistance, so like a poor connection or something like that, or even wire undersizing, will result in the entire circuit overheating. Now, in the case of wire undersizing, where that resistance happens across the entire length, that can result in that portion of the circuit overheating because of the ampacity or the amp capacity of that wire. But in the case of a poor connection, that heat is going to be localized in that area. So if the poor connection is at the contactor or at the breaker in the disconnect, that point of resistance where the resistance is added, that's going to be the point that overheats. But the confusion that a lot of people have is they'll then imagine that that results in higher current in the entire circuit. That's actually not true because when you have a point of resistance that's added to a circuit that's not supposed to be there, that results in voltage drop. It results in resistance and voltage drop, which results in actually less current overall in the entire circuit. And that's just basic Ohm's law stuff. When you add more resistance to a circuit, more electrical resistance, and the voltage stays the same, the current goes down. In this case, the voltage isn't staying the same when you have this additional resistance added because it results in a voltage drop and so that results in less work being done in essence what happens is your compressors or whatever's connected to that circuit become less efficient and then there's waste at that location where there's heat being generated at the end of the day it's a bad thing it's bad for the compressor it's bad for whatever motors are connected ultimately it leads to overheating at that location which leads to circuit damage so something to look for when you have intermittent breaker tripping that sort of thing but you want to look at that breaker itself. Is it making poor connection to the bus bar? Are the connections done poorly? And of course, once it's damaged, it's best just to go ahead and replace it. Now, some people will point out, isn't that the electrician's job to do? And the answer is yes. In most places, it is the electrician who's going to do that. Depends on um, kind of your local AHJ rules. Uh, Kalos, we are a licensed electrical contractor as well. So those of you who are concerned about Burt working in the panel, we are actually certified and licensed to do so. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing, you can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.